Hakeem, it's so nice to be talking to you again. Thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you. You're back here at uh, Cosmo Fest. How does yes. it feel to be back here at Cosmo? Oh, it's great, man. It's, it's been a, a, a fun festival so far. Um, what's incredible is to witness the, the growth of the festival. There's a mm. lot more people here than last time I was here. Last time I interviewed you, I wanted to ask you about Daft Punk, and you, you, know, you gave me some great answers and took me through that session. But I always wanted to ask you about the, the Let's Dance session, mm. David Bowie, Nile Rodgers, Nile's one of my favorite guitarists, oh, and you know, wonderful. I just want to like take me into um, like how you got that that groove going for <laughs> for for Let's Dance. Like, how, how did that come about? There was a sort of a basic pattern idea for the groove, right? And the bass player Carmine Rojas and I started playing the basic idea, and then we kept expanding on it. You right, know, okay. the, the phrase grew from a or one bar repeating phrase to a two bar thing. And then we would come up with another variation. Now it's four bars, mm. you know? Cool. And it, it ends up, by the time we were done, it was an eight bar phrase. Yeah. Which is right. very unusual for a pop record, I think, that, right. that, that there would be a specific eight bar pattern. Right. That was the first thing we cut, actually. It was the first song of the, the album sessions. I walk in the studio and that day, the first song up was Let's Dance. Nice. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. And so it's a good way to kick off a, yeah. a session for an album right. project. Yeah. And, and I would, what I do remember about it was you could feel that it was a special energy in the room. That's awesome. You know, I mean, we, Niall, uh, Carmine Rojas on bass, um, David Bowie sang live uh, reference vocals with us, which is always great when the, when the artist or the singer is actually there with you. That's awesome. I usually do a lot of record dates for pop stars where, you know, you're just there with the producer and you're working on the tracks and they're going to overdub their vocal later. Right. But not David. Bowie wanted to be in the room while it was happening. That's really cool. Singing with the band. And I think what that does is you, you get to experience the artist's intention for the song. Yeah. You get to hear their attitude and, and what they're trying to accomplish right. and it just makes it easier to dig in and play the right thing for them you know yeah that's really cool I mean you know you as you said like you have you have a lot of I, I imagine you've done so many pop records yes. that where you're sort of laying down the groove and that's fun too it's no problem but when the artist shows up that's that's really fun. Just especially to, someone like Bowie. Especially somebody <laughs> like Bowie. Yeah. That's awesome. I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, just playing live with with Sting. You have this iconic, "I Burn for You," that from 1985, that drum solo that is, you know, is is absolutely legendary. Take me into how it is drumming live with such a with such an like energetic groove to kind of like. I guess I could describe like a chill kind of sting vocal, you know? How do you bring that sort of, that energy? Well, you know, I, I think what you're really talking about are dynamics. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's really about uh, letting the artist set the tone for the, for, the, for the dynamic mood that's happening. Right. You know, in my clinic there was a talk about, you know, how, how can bass players and drummers learn to groove better together? And the answer is listening to right. each other. Just become better listeners. Yeah. And that's the same thing with the entire band, really. You know, once you get everybody in that collaborative, listening, you know, open place, you know, then the music starts telling you where it wants to go. You right. Know? And, and with Sting, you know, it was a very dynamic show, you know. You know, they're, they're, he's singing some really beautiful ballads while playing a classical nylon string guitar. Yeah, yeah. Other times he's playing upright bass. Other times he's uh, got, he puts a strat around his neck and rocks out. You know, he didn't play he didn't play an electric bass on that tour. That was Daryl Jones on electric bass. Mm -hmm. But he did play acoustic bass on I Burn For You. This was a really fun tour. It was one of those tours where there was no bad night on the tour. That's, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. Every, every night was a, was a different musical adventure. That's awesome. It really was. And, uh, beautiful memories. I didn't prepare this question because I didn't know this was going to be a question, but you know, Dave Grohl showed up today at, at Cosmo <laughs> Fest. You got to hang with him. Yes. Just uh, tell me, just 
tell me about, about meeting or just hanging out with him. And, you know. Well, Dave is, um, <laughs> he's a special guy and he's one of my favorite musicians. You know, I've, I've, I'm always um, especially proud of drummers that make it happen. Mm. You know, dr- in other words, drummers that step out front, step from behind the kit. Yeah. Because a lot of really incredible producers and songwriters are actually drummers. There's a whole history of, of drummers that sing and write and produce right, amazing music. Every, you know, it's a long list. Don Henley, mm-hmm. Marvin Gaye, mm-hmm. Maurice White, Earth, Wind and Fire, mm-hmm. uh, Phil Collins, yep. Yep. <laughs> um, Dave Grohl. Yep. You know, I'm sure if I, if I keep sitting here, I'll think this of so many, many, many more. And uh, it's, it's fascinating, you know, that, uh, you know, the, the, when you get to, t- to see the drummer's vision in that way. And so I've, I was already a fan of Nirvana, but I really loved the Foo Fighters when he formed that project. I was just a huge fan. Did he, did he talk to you about, like, your stuff? Like, did he, say, did he recognize you? Like, well, oh, yeah, yeah. We met um, back in 2011 or 2012 when uh, the record... Uh, Wasting Light came out. Mm-hmm. And I f- really fell in love with the Wasting Light record. And I saw that they were going to be playing at Madison Square Garden in New York City, yeah. where I lived. And I was like, wow, I, I really want to go to that gig. And I remembered that both Taylor and uh, Dave are Zildjian artists. Mm. So I called the Zildjian artist rep. And he was like, oh, no problem, man. Let me hook you guys up. You know, Taylor wrote back in like 10 minutes, dude. We're hanging. It's, it's on. <laughs> we're doing it. You know, That's cool. they are really nice guys, man. It's a, it's a, and they are incredible players. I call them the SWAT team of rock. <laughs> they come in and they just kill it, and then they're out of there. You know, it's like they're so tight and so powerful, That's and awesome. and so fun. You know that uh, it, it's pretty badass. I was at Dave's fiftieth birthday party last January. We had a lot of fun together. Sweet. It was called the Grohl Bowl. <laughs> and he rented out, nice. it was hilarious, he rented out a whole bowling alley and, and there was the one lane was all drummers, Kenny Aronoff <laughs> and myself and, and, uh, and Taylor. It was really fun, man. Do, do you do well, at, are, the, do, are the drummers good at bowling? I suck at bowling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but I like tossing the ball down there. I, actually, I got some strikes that night. Oh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I just I just throw the ball down there as fast and hard as I can, man. And <laughs> I can just imagine a bunch of like you know legendary drummers who like you know accuracy is such a thing you're good at, and then you Aaron know, off is the man. Oh yeah, <laughs> he can bowl. He's serious about it. Nice. I, he might even brought his own shoes, his own ball. <laughs> I mean, I was like, dude, you're a little too serious about this. <laughs> but we had a fun night. Drumming with Sheik. Okay. <laughs> I love that stuff. <laughs> Me too. I almost don't have a question. I'm just like, it's awesome. <laughs> it What's really it is. like just being on stage there with Nile and you know all those you know all those you know, legendary what, what, musicians? What's really fun is to be in a band where every song you play is a hit. Yeah, it's like so many. every song that he counts off is a hit. And it's and what's really also fun is to watch the audiences all around the world have the same reaction. They all yeah. explode. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And I spent, well, I've known Niall since I was like 12 or 13 years old. Yeah. Um, we were, gosh, when did I meet Niall first? We were um, going to Jazzmobile in Harlem. Uh, they had a Jazzmobile workshop where kids can come and learn to play jazz and learn to play with a big band. And mm-hmm. there were some really great teachers there. One of the drummers, Freddie Waits, uh, was really awesome. So, and it was free. Yeah, nice. Free program, right? So that was my first experience meeting Niall. He's a few years older than me. And then, after that, we had a band that played at an amusement park in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. The amusement park is still there. It's called Great Adventure. Okay. And you know how you walk through an amusement park and there's band shells with bands playing cover songs? Right. That was us. We, was were, <laughs> we were one of those like, oh band shell cover yeah. band. It was Niall and myself and a keyboard player named Denzel Miller. His buddy, Bernard Edwards, the bass player for Chic, used to come mm-hmm. hang out in the park with us all the time. Oh, cool. Right? So I got to meet Bernard pretty young, too. When we were done that summer, Niall and Bernard said to me, Yo, oh, we're going to Paris. Okay. You should come with us. We're starting a new band. We're going to Paris. So I said, well, I just auditioned to get into music in high school, so I don't want to be a high school dropout before I get there. Right. So you guys have fun in Paris, and I'll see you when you get back. 
<laughs> and a, a couple a couple of years and later, I know the end of that story. You know the end of that story. I was kicking myself in the halls of music and art high school. But it, Dang! <laughs> why didn't I go to Paris with Nyla Bernard? <laughs> But you know, it ended up working out, you know. It, it all worked out just <laughs> fine. <laughs> and, and of course, we remained friends, and, and we remained in touch, and I celebrated their success with them and would go to their gigs. And, and so when Niall started getting all that production work, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, he called me for the Let's Dance record. There you go. But then um, when he wanted to do a reunion in the late 90s of Chic, um, I, Tony Thompson, the drummer, wasn't available for one reason or another. And so Niall and Bernard called me, and um, it was a great sort of reunion. Nice. And uh, we did some touring. Unfortunately, Bernard Edwards died on that tour. Um, but we, we con about a year later, we picked up uh, with a great bass player named Jerry Barnes. Mm. And I toured with the band for about eight years after that. Yeah. Yeah, we went all over the world, man, you know, making people dance all over the world. <laughs> It was really fun. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. Well, you know what? Thanks so much for talking to me. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, it was good to see you again. Yeah, likewise, man.